Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking another look at a really cool little program which uh, we actually took a look at around about a year ago, and I thought it was a really good thing, and a lot of people were very interested in it, and it's got quite a few views, so I figured I'd do an updated video on it. For those of you that are not sure, Microsoft, in their wisdom, do actually store and track you in many different ways on your computer system, especially with Windows 10 and Windows 11. Various forms of telemetry data is absorbed, used, and transferred back to their servers to get a better idea of what you actually want to do with your Windows computer, and potentially for other advertising purposes as well. We've all done it before, where you've gone to look at something on the internet, and then all of a sudden, everywhere there's adverts, which are just basically pushing you in that direction that you were initially looking at. Or maybe if you've got a microphone connected, you've said a certain word, and then forever and a day after you go to Facebook or something and then all of a sudden there's adverts for that thing that you've mentioned. So that they are spying on you to some extent, uh, whether you like it, whether you don't, whether you accept it, whether you don't, that is entirely up to you. But if you want a way of actually mitigating some of that and stopping some of the services, you don't necessarily have to block it all. Some things you may actually enjoy using. So there is a tool on the market called Do Not Spy. There was a version, Do Not Spy 7, 8, 10 and 11. And the latest version is uh, pretty decent as well. For those of you that have upgraded recently to the latest version of Windows, which is 23H2, I think it is, previously, if you use this software, you could do an automatic update. But because Microsoft are getting a little bit savvy to what is going on with these kind of programs, they've actually blocked a lot of the features. So the auto update doesn't work and some of the features have been kind of mitigated. So you probably want to go for the latest version. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the latest version go through some of the features that you may or may not want to change, and then we'll look at some practical demonstrations of actually how it makes your PC faster when some of these telemetry data options are actually disabled. So let's get straight on with it. So first we're gonna go over to the computer, go to this website, so pxc-coding.com forward slash do not spy 11 forward slash, uh, links will be in the video description. And this goes through, takes you to the download page, tells you who's used it, etc. So it's had almost 2 million downloads. So clearly some people are getting used out of this, which is excellent. Let's take a quick look at the features. So it goes through and tells you what it does. So it offers several features for your convenience. So now there's a automatic update check, uh, which is built in, which is now better than when it was in previous version. Automatic language detection, all that kind of stuff. And it can quickly undo all settings should you do something, which actually makes your system... Uh, not behave in the way that you should think it was. And also, it now takes utilization of the system restore feature. So if you install this, it automatically does a snapshot of your system using system restore. So if you do want to undo any changes, you can go into Windows system restore and undo those changes. So yeah, kind of uh, get a good idea of what's going on. It gets rid of advertising, basically all these kinds of things here. There's different categories, but we'll take a look at that shortly. If we look at the change log, you can see there's the new version, which is uh, 1200, which was released October, end of October 2023, to coincide with the Windows 11 23H2, moment four, and added some new tweaks as well. So let's go to the download page, and we'll download this. For some people, it says there, you might get a uh, thing with Windows Defender, the smart screen, but just carry on anyway, it's absolutely fine. If you want to support the creator, you're more than welcome to do so. You don't really get a great deal extra, but you do get the option for saving profiles from multiple computers, so you can quickly transfer it to other computers should you wish to. And there's various options there, starting from just $5, which I think is a particularly good value for money. If you just want to do a free one, you can choose Do Not Spy 11 free, which costs you absolutely zero, add free, and it's still got the same amount of settings, so 216 settings. Both versions are the same, that's just you get a little bit more there. So we'll click on Download, and we'll save it to our Windows desktop. So we can minimize those windows and now we've got the application here. So we'll double click it to start it running. You won't be able to see this bit. This is user account control. Then you get the setup language of which there is German, English, Spanish, and French. I'm gonna choose English, click okay. Then you've got the license agreement, which you're more than welcome to have a look through. There's not a great deal in there, to be honest with you, considering uh, what you get in some of these end user license agreements. So I'm just gonna click on next and carry on letting it install. Ask you where you want to install it, and also you get the option for a desktop shortcut, which we are definitely gonna do. It tells you the destination, etc. Click install, there we go. So that is it, it's a very, very small program. It doesn't need a lot of resources at all, and we'll hopefully claw back some of the resources that we've lost to Windows 11. 
So we've got the option here to launch it. You can choose to click or unclick that. It's right up to you. I'm going to allow it to launch. So this is the first window that you're going to be greeted with. You've also got the options up here. So you've got uh, the option for saving and loading profiles. If you go with the pro version, you've got actions. So you can create a system restore point, but don't worry, it'll do that automatically before you make any changes. And you've got the option for check for updates and the website and all that kind of good stuff there. So in this section here, this is the important bit which we want to pay attention to. And they've actually gone ahead and put in all the details on the side there. So if you choose any of these particular settings, it gives you a brief overview of what it actually does. So effectively, what you want to be looking at on this is if you look at anything in blue, those are suggested to actually go ahead and do. There are some which are in amber. Now these are ones which potentially you might want to do, but for some people it's possibly left alone is the better option. Like this one, apps disable access to camera. Now for some of you, if you do like to use apps that take advantage of your camera, such as your webcam, maybe you're using OBS, things like that, then you probably want to leave that enabled. Again, down to the individual. And there are some which if we scroll down through, there's actually tons of them. So there's some red ones there. So we've got the privacy. So disable smart screen filter for URLs. As we can see there, it tells you what it does. This tweak prevents smart screen filter from checking URLs, as it says there. So you probably don't want to do that because smart screen is there for a reason to actually protect you from harmful URLs. So even though to some extent Microsoft are actually taking a look at those URLs, you probably do want the protection. So it's uh, going to be one of those things. Go down through, check the individual bits and pieces, have a read through. You can, if you want to, just do check all and then just untick the ones that you don't want, which are actually in amber. So like this one here, I do want access to camera because I'm using OBS. I do want access to microphone because again, OBS. And you, like that, you can go through and uh, see what you want. So continue experiences. This is something which allows you to continue your experience from one computer to another. So I don't actually want that. So I'm gonna allow it to disable that and location access. I'm gonna get rid of that as well. So we can go through. I think the only one that I don't want is going to be that one the privacy smart screen i think there's a couple of others in red as well so yeah with updates if you want to disable automatic windows updates this is a really cool way of doing it so you can just click on that and then you won't get windows updates but i do want windows updates and also i want the malicious software removal tour i want that updated as well so i'm going to choose that but again you can go ahead and uh, choose whichever settings you wish this is just for this computer. It doesn't apply it to your profile and then to all other PCs that you use with the same profile. So you can have different settings for different computers if you have different usage and different needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That uh, for me is absolutely fine. So I'm gonna click on apply. And it says there, do you want to create a restore point? It is optional, but I would strongly suggest you do it. So I'm gonna click on yes. So it's now creating a system restore point. So if we find out after we do a reboot, maybe there's some things which are not working as we intended, we can go into system restore and remove those settings. Or alternatively, you can do it from do not spy. You can just do uncheck all, click apply, and it will reset to the default values. So there is always that option. So that is done. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And actually what I've done is I'll show you on screen now some examples of the actual improvements in performance I've received on my other PC, which I've actually got this installed on my main video editing PC. And again, I was quite liberal with the changes there. I didn't change all of them, still had access to things like the camera, the microphone and Windows updates. But actually after running Cinebench in a loop, did notice an improvement in performance. So you can see that on the screen now, I think it's around about 500 points, which is effectively the same as basically shutting down something like Steam or Epic Gaming, those types of things. So there is a lot of background resources which are going on. And if you've got a slightly underpowered PC, which might be struggling a little bit with Windows 11, I think this is definitely worth a go. So there we go. There is a look at the updated version of Do Not Spy 11, totally free of charge. Again, if you want to pay for the pro version, you're more than welcome to, to help support the creator, which again, is entirely up to you. I think it's actually a really good piece of software. And if you want to spend the time in going through the list and seeing which bits you would actually like to have disabled, I think it's actually quite useful. But as always, please do let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. I know there's going to be a lot of you that really just don't care. They have a specific use for their PC. They don't really do anything else on it. And that's absolutely fine. But 
more and more people these days are getting to the point where basically everything happens on their PC. So you do your banking, your eBay transfers, PayPal, all that kind of stuff. And also you browse for things which you may not necessarily want Microsoft to know about, or anyone else for that matter, if they're selling off your data, which inevitably they are to some extent. So again, hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then maybe consider hitting the subscribe button and then hit the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.